The paranormal community divide hauntings into two basic types of groups. One is residual energy and one is intelligent energy. So would you like to tell the difference between the two? Sure. Um, and I'd also say it's not just the paranormal community. I don't know what paranormal means to you guys. I actually don't know what it means as a psychic know. medium. But in all like um, any psychic medium uh, or psychic classes you'll take or mediumship classes you'll take, it's there's the same. So anybody who's look, working with energy, you're going to have to feel the difference between residual and intelligence. Residual energy is... Um, what I would describe as, you know, when, a, when we've been in a room and a dog walks into the room and can tell that you were there, the dog can smell you even after you've left. That's residual energy. We've left something of our essence. We've left our scent and the dog can pick it up. So humans can do that too. It's not necessarily through scent, but humans can feel the emotional, okay, sometimes it's through scent. Humans can feel the emotional leftover energy long after other humans have left. So when you get a place, um, let's use the jail for instance, where you have 137 years of certain types of activity, we can walk in today in 2020 or 2025, whatever year you're watching this in, and we can still pick up on that leftover residual energy. So uh, from all those people who were there 200 years ago. So residual energy tends to be really heavy. The weird thing is, in my experience, that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of the heavy residual energy. And residual mm -hmm. energy can be that heavy feeling in your chest. It can be the fear that takes over. It could also be hearing door slam or hearing things, mm -hmm. even if you're watching the door and the door is not moving. It could be footsteps, a lot of times it's footsteps. It could even be seeing a shadow or the figure of what people would call a ghost. Because let's say in the jail, the guards would walk up, do their rounds probably every half hour. Maybe, it depends. Every yeah. half hour, every hour, 24 hours a day for 137 years. If you don't see a ghost walking up those steps, if you don't hear footsteps on those on those stairs when nobody's there, that would be odd. So that's the residual energy. On the other hand, spirit communication, where you're communicating with a soul, there's an intelligence and you can actually communicate back and forth. And you've experienced very clearly the differences in the jail. Right, both. And deal. not at the jail, but other places too. And mm -hmm. I think anybody who is really in tune with um, the spirit world and energy, you can start to really differentiate um, the difference. I'm going to tell you a ghost story involving Alonzo Smalls. Now, one night, a tour guide by the name Andrew was giving a tour. Actually, it wasn't at night. It was a daytime history tour. So he was bringing people through the jail. They were talking about architecture. They were talking about the just the building, the history, no ghosts, just a pure history tour in broad daylight. And Andrew is standing in this room, and there's a very creepy wheelchair that's outside in the hall here. And as Andrew's talking about the history, the wheelchair moved of its own accord, and it kept moving, and it rolled all the way across the doorway. Well, everyone freaks out. I mean, they're, they, they get out of here. They're thinking, my gosh, how, how, what, what happened? They run, they leave. Andrew tries to wrap up the tour, but they all need to leave the building. Two nights later, Andrew's up in here giving a ghost tour, 
and a little girl is on the tour. Now I will say that children tend to love the jail. They don't get as scared as the adults do. So a little girl's in here, she runs into this room, and when she runs into this room, she comes over to this crack on the wall, and she starts talking. And she's talking here and looking back at the crowd, and Andrew's like, come on, sweetie, join, rejoin the tour. And she's chattering away. And Andrew finally says, well, let's see what she's doing. He says, well, what are you doing? And she said, I'm talking to my new friend. And Andrew said, hmm, uh, who's your new friend? And she looks over and she's like, I don't know if I can say his name. And Andrew said, well, how old is he? And she looks over and she, she goes, he's 10. And she has one more thing to say. She looks back and she looks at Andrew and she said, his name is Alonzo and he enjoyed playing with you with the wheelchair the other day. One of the saddest tales in this jail is of an inmate by the name of Alonzo Smalls. Alonzo Smalls, he was bored one day about 1911 and he was looking for something to do in Charleston. He found a trolley car and he took it, went for a joy ride up and down the trolley tracks. Well, unfortunately, as he turned the corner, a man by the name of Captain Thomas Sims was exiting another trolley car. Alonzo struck him, ran over him, and killed him. The authorities went out, they found Alonzo, they charged him with murder, and they brought him right back here to the jail here and turned him over to Captain William Bennett. Captain William Bennett was a kind man. He took one look at Alonzo and could not bring himself to put him in these cells in here in this location with these human monsters because he knew that Alonzo Smalls would not last five minutes inside this place. Why was that? That's because Alonzo Smalls was a 10-year-old boy charged with murder and housed inside this jail. Captain Bennett allowed him to wander the halls and wander throughout the jail, but never to leave the grounds. Now, we don't know exactly what happened to Alonzo because the paper trail has grown cold, but we do know he's still in here. He's often seen in here and heard in here. Bruce has seen Alonzo, and in fact, he thought a little boy had gotten into the jail one time when Bruce was closing up. And he chased the little boy down through the hall, and he realized later there was no child actually in here. And so I feel like Bruce has a special connection with Alonzo, whether he wants to admit it or not. I feel like Alonzo trusts uh, Bruce, and I will say that would make sense with Bruce's background because he did work on... Uh, cases when he was a detective involving child victims. So I believe that Alonzo has a special connection with Bruce.